first Mr. Palmer here, uh, video normalization. So, um, basically, the big question for this one is can you normalize a data set to create a design for a relational database? So, what is normalization? But when you have a flat file database, a flat file system, the data is stored and used in an inefficient manner. So, we've seen that and we looked at the process of, of uh, what is actually a relational database comparing the two things. Well, the whole point of normalization is to basically increase the database efficiency so the usefulness increases. You do that by reducing the redundant data, so you're preventing errors, reducing the amount of storage needed, and you're ensuring dependency within a table so that um, the data is organized efficiently. All right. So the guy on the right hand side is Edgar F. Codd, and he came up with these rules um, for database normalization, and then they were developed further by different people. Okay, and basically what he's saying is that you perform a series of steps to create a normal form. So that's like the standard state that it should be in a normal form. And it's a cumulative process. So you start with unnormalized data, then you go into, by performing a series of steps, you end up with first normal form, then another set of steps take you to second, and another set of steps take you up to third normal form. Okay, so here's a little description. Okay, I've got a small luxury goods company that sells jam. Okay, we've got different flavors of jam, and we've got different jar sizes. Customers phone up to place orders and whoever's in the office deals with the query. So in unnormalized form, if I looked at some sample data, and a good way of, of um, going through the process of normalization is to put some practice data into the table to see what the data will look like. And then from there, you can start basically um, going through the steps of normalization. So you can see this repeating in group data in the different fields over there. So repeating data, for example, London, 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 okay and uh, group, uh, we've got group data in the items and actually the items are repeating data as well okay and you'll see why later on so uh, we want to focus on making what we call atomic fields so every data value in the field should be atomic and no data fields no record should be containing repeating data so an example of that you can see actually is that there's a problem with the item field because in the previous um, screen you can see that with the items items are being repeated within a single record um, I should only have one item in there per record but because it's all grouped up I've got multiple items how can I solve it I could add more columns into my database table okay so I could add item 1 then item 2 alright so now I'm repeating essentially the same attribute which is not efficient okay what happens if I want to buy more than one item? Do I have to add another item column onto the table? So I'm now an item three, or an item four, or an item five. Okay. What happens if I'm only buying one item? Am I wasting storage? Okay. So we don't want um, records of repeating data. So when I go to first normal form, I'm basically removing that repeating data. I've analyzed that actually the items are being repeated. They need to go in another table by themselves. All right. So I've now got an orders table on the left hand side that massive one and I've got a, an order uh, an item ordered items table on the right hand side where I have a composite primary key okay that's made up of the order ID and the item that's being ordered so you can that, that the two fields together become unique because you can see I've got multiple items for order ID and I could technically order uh, someone could you could buy 50 gram of pair more than once but what I want to do is I don't want to buy 50 gram of pair more than once in the same order. So by making the two fields together, the primary key, you ensure that there's a unique combination. That's called a composite key. All right. Uh, now, to go now into second normal form, the data has to be in first normal form already. That's the first thing you've got to check. And secondly, all non-key attributes are dependent on the primary key. You're going to be like, well, what does that mean? Non-key attributes are dependent on a primary key. Look at the database table. All right. Um, there are two orders um, being handled by Jim Price. Okay. Staff name, staff surname, Jim Price. Handle two orders. Mary Poppins phoned in and I phoned in. Well, actually, what I could do is I could have spelled it John on the next one. All right. Or um, my customer name, Mr. Palmer could be um, changed across the two orders so that's going to create errors in the in the data set the integrity of the data set is going to be compromised so what we want to do is we need to be able to identify where 
um, what we're calling here the non uh, non key attributes are okay and basically shift them out so when we go into second normal form we now have something like this okay so um, the bold strong colors are the original table where the primary key is and then the lighter color is where it's being used as a, as a foreign key okay I'm, I'm showing you the view like this now just to begin with but just so you can visualize the data and I'll show you what that looks like more as more of an entity relationship diagram okay so you can see that I've now split out the customers into a custom table bottom bottom uh, left hand corner okay so I've got the customer number as the new primary key in there I've got a separate staff table on the bottom right hand side with the green color staff number um, I've split my items out into a separate table as well because the items could um, be I could have a 50g of pair 50g of par etc in the in first normal form so by splitting it out into its own separate table all I need to do now is link the item number into the ordered items table so that looks a bit like this as an entity relationship diagram okay each of those things is now in its own table right uh, you can clearly see the entities now okay and the relationships between them so you can see the dependencies between the relations now third normal form states that the data has to be in first normal form okay and there are no functional dependency between non key attributes that means that there are other there are attributes that are not key fields that are dependent on other non key fields the bit in blue is the easiest way to remember that an attribute depends on a key the whole key and nothing but the key what does that look like practically there's a problem here with the second normal form okay, and the problem actually lies here in the custom table because my my town okay is determined by uh, me the customer but the customer is not determined by the town okay so the um, address town is not really functionally dependent on the customer sorry it's the other way around the customer is not functionally dependent upon the town it's getting a bit late <laughs> all right so what I want to do is I need to think carefully about how actually I could uh, optimize the efficiency of this further because there could be more people living in Buckhouse or in the Windy Tower okay so actually what I want to do in third normal form is I want another um, entity over here okay so I've got an address entity where the primary key is the postcode and for postcode there are the only two other attributes I have in there are street and town because basically based upon the postcode you know what street and town you live in the only thing that's going to be different between people who have the same postcode is their door number okay so in the customers table now we can see that door number is dependent upon the um, customer all right but we've separated out the other data okay so that which is actually dependent upon the postcode street and town are dependent upon postcode okay and that becomes third normal form because now in each of those entities every single attribute is dependent upon the primary key the whole primary key and nothing but the primary key all right so those are like the summary definitions of first second and third normal form all right there are other normal forms beyond third normal form but they exist for specific reasons okay also if you have something like a transaction database you might not actually have your data fully normalized because when you buy something you want to store the price that it was bought at okay so that means you need to keep data in there that will not ever be updated okay the, the purchase price all right so normalization has its limits and it's up to the designer to make a sense of where normalization should be used up to what point all right so the big question can you normalize the data set to create design for a relational database i've been through the steps of how to do it what i would do if i were you is i would just google uh, sample data set for normalization or normalization de data set with solutions or something like that find one and have a practice okay to see whether you can do it I'm not going to go into all that jive about oh yeah in the exam they might ask you to do this they might ask you to do that because no teacher can predict what will come up in the exam 
what you need to do is you need to be able to do all of the steps all right thank you very much and i realized that i need to make one more video on sql all right so that will be coming up sometime next week